Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 12 of our C Sharp for Automation testing video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about arrays. And this video is all about arrays. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 11 since this part will have some similarities of code from that part. All right, so let's get started. Arrays. Arrays help us to store multiple values of same type. If you have already heard about the types in our previous videos of this course, this is going to really make you sense types. It can be an integer type or a string type or a Boolean type, or it can be whatever type you want to specify. So arrays helps us to store multiple values of same type. So within an array, if you specify integer and string, that's not really going to work out. You have to specify integer, then it should be integer. The, all the values within the arrays should be integer type. It should not be an array, a string type or uh, a Boolean type. So array can hold any number of data in it and you can also explicitly specify the size of the array. So you can specify like, I want to store just 10 values, then you can specify 10 for the array storage. And if you are specifying 100, you can store 100. If you don't specify anything, then the values which is available within the declaration of that particular variable is going to be the size of it. If it really doesn't make any sense, we'll probably talk about it while we see the code. Array can be uh, of different dimensions as well. There are like uh, two dimensional arrays, three dimensional arrays, uh, multi dimensional arrays. I really don't work on those concepts as well, but uh, it, it is just information where you can also uh, understand that okay, there is something which is available in arrays, uh, which is kind of uh, crazy. But while we work with collections of C sharp, Arrays is really not going to really matter a lot, but this is the same concept which is going to be carry forward to collections of C Sharp as well. All right, so just this is guys, uh, just to be very, very simplified, arrays helps us to store multiple values of same type. All right, for example, if we create a integer type array, the code is going to look something like this. Integer, remember there is a square bracket open and close out there. That's what it is, the array declaration. Of integer type and that's the variable test cases is equal to and since you're going to create a new integer array you have to use remember the new keyword while we we're talking about classes right that's exactly this new int of open square bracket and close square bracket and here there is a braces opened with 101 102 103 and 104 this is how you can create the integer array. If you want to create a string array, then it's going to look something like this. Test case name, and you can see there's a string open square bracket and close square bracket, new string open square bracket and close square bracket, and braces, login, user form, selenium, hover. So it's going to hold all the test names in this array. So getting data out from an array is also an important part. You can see that I have specified the st string array test names, something like this. And then I'm using a for each loop this time. In our previous video of this course, we were talking about for loop and while loop. For each is very, very handy while you work with collections, which has a innumerable types. So it will, okay, what is innumerable? Don't worry about it yet. We'll talk about collections. Uh, we'll cross those concepts as well. So for each loop has a var type uh, for test case test names in remember there is a keyword in while we were discussing about iterations in our previous video I said in as well so this in test names the test names is the collection of data or array so it's going to return each and every single data while it iterates through the for each loop and now it's going to print out this value. Console.write line, the test name is test name. So it's going to print out the values like this. Login, user form, selenium, hover. Super cool, right? You can also iterate and get the value out using the for loop. But for each is much more sophisticated and it reduces the number of boilerplate cores. So we'll talk about for loop and for each loop difference while uh, we get into the code. All right. So. Let's see this in action and how things work. So for that, I'm gonna to flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same code which we were talking in our previous video. So I'm just going to completely get rid of this code. So here I'm gonna create a integer array. So remember for creating an array, we, we need to use the type 
of which type you're going to create an array integer type and here use this square bracket open close right and here let's say count or maybe test case uh, is equal to new integer open close braces and here you can specify the number something like this 101 102 103 and 104 and use this semicolon to end the statement right and now let's say if i intentionally doing something like this karthik you will see there's an exception here the error is it says cannot implicitly convert string to integer it won't because it's a integer type and you have to be specifying only the int but rather you can do an explicit uh, casting something like int dot parse uh, for the Karthik but it really doesn't make any sense right Karthik is not an integer we know that so don't do this on a four save it and how to get the values out of it let's do it with the for loop that we saw in our previous video so for int i is equal to zero remember the length thing we specified 10 in our previous video so how to get the length of an array it's actually very very simple all you have to do is get the array variable test case id and hit dot you can see there are different kinds of methods available within the uh, within the array variable and you can see there is a very very useful property which is called length and it says it gets a 32 bit integer that represents the total number of elements in an in all the dimension of an array all the dimensions of an array so i already said you have something like multi-dimensional array single dimensional array right so don't worry about it this array which we're talking about is a single dimensional array because you have specific only one square bracket out there if you specify two square brackets it will become two dimensional array three become three dimensional if you specify many become multi-dimension so don't worry about the dimensions yet because it's not very useful while we work with automation at least so far i have worked in my career maybe it should be let's use this length property and uh, let's say if I do a console.write line and let's say I want to get the value out from the test case ID. So how do I get the value out from a test case ID array? So test case ID, right? There is something if you can see here, if I open the parentheses and close the parentheses, this is called as an index. You can specify the index value. If it is zero, which means you're going to get the first value out from an array. Why is that suddenly? I actually forgot to say that. An array always start from zero. The first value can be accessed from an index value of zero. And in an array, if you see, the first value will be zero, the index value. So within the zero index value, the value will be 101. And the index value one will have 102 index value two will have 103 index value four will have 104 and if you specify index value five test case id of square bracket five you will get an exception it says index out of bound exception it's kind of confusing right don't worry about it let's try to execute this code and see how things works so let's say i'm going to explicitly specifying the index here as zero and if I run this code, you will actually see that it keeps on printing 101. The reason is because it is looping for four times, zero through the length. The length is actually four. So it is looping through zero to four. And it is getting the zero, the zero index, which, which is actually, as I already said, is 101, right? If I want to get the second value of an index, we have to specify one here. And if I want to get the third value of the index, I have to specify two here, right? But how do I get all the values? We already know that if I pass the i here, we can actually get it. Let's try to run this code and see how things works. You can see this is so awesome. 101, 102, 103, and 104. We get all the values out from it. Let's say if I intentionally specify five here, which is completely not there. And now if I run this, you will see that we will get an exception. Hmm. What does it say? It says index was outside the bound of an array or 
index out of range exception. So the range is actually different. So this is why we're getting an exception. That's why it is always wise that you give the value using this way, the index value, right? All right, so this is how you can loop using the for loop. Let's try a different thing. In the string array, let's say I'm gonna get the test case uh, name and I'm gonna say string array of the uh, of the test case names as a username or user form and then let's say login form and uh, hover something like this right and if I want to get all the values out from a test case instead of specifying these so cumbersome stuff we can easily use what is called as for each see there something called for each out there again double tap will do the job for you so it's actually looking for a collection right the collection is nothing but our string collection or the collection of values which is nothing but our array so we can get the array paste it right here in this item you can even leave it as an item but to make it more sense let's call this as test case and here console dot right line let's say I'm just gonna specify test case save it and if I run this code you can see that we get the user form login and hover as well all these three value right so this is how you can use the for each loop to iterate an array and get the value out from it I don't even have to specify the index and all these crazy stuff a lot of codes uh, just this it will be very very handy while you actually work with the collections of C sharp, like hash tables, dictionaries, list of uh, list of values, list arrays, something like that. We'll talk about those concepts in our upcoming videos of this course. But this is how you can actually iterate through a array in C sharp, right? So that's it, guys. Once again, thank you very much for watching this video, and have a great day.